At Modman Digital, we help businesses navigate the digital landscape. We recognize that it is crazy out there. So many channels, so many platforms, so many things to think about while managing the day-to-day -day operations of your business. We provide you with actionable solutions to market your business online and achieve your business goals. Welcome. Happy Thursday. We made it. We made it. <laughs> I am Tamara Monlui, founder of Monavan Digital Marketing Solutions. And you know what we do? We help businesses navigate the digital landscape. <laughs> we also give them practical solutions for marketing their business online. Can I just tell you how excited I am to be here tonight? Top seven digital marketing trends at 7 p.m. Tonight, we're talking about the on assessing your online presence. Okay, so that's what we did with the businesses this week. It was crazy fun. <laughs> I was the expert. So I love whenever I get to interact with the businesses, get into their analytics, get into their numbers. I'm sure they were just like, oh boy, she's crazy. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun. Uh, I think they had a lot of fun. We got a lot of information out of it. So it's going to be really, really great today uh, to kind of go through and talk about everything. So Assessing the online presence was no joke, right? Because we went into their all the analytics, we went into everything that really kind of opened them up, opened the businesses up. You know, they were super vulnerable. And I really appreciate the fact that they were so vulnerable because looking at your numbers the first time, uh, it's never sometimes, it's never a good feeling, right? Because you think you always should be doing better. Uh, but I think they were just so open. And that's what I loved about this entire process. <sighs> so, where do we start, right? Because I'm the expert, I give my top seven. So you know what? Let's kick it off with the top seven for assessing your online presence. All right. So let's jump in. <laughs> all right. So here's your top seven tips for assessing your online presence. First of all, the first thing you want to do is you want to look at your analytics from all your channels and platforms. So what does that mean? Every platform that you're on has analytics. If you're on Instagram, there's analytics for Instagram. If you have a website, you should have Google Analytics. Actually, you should have everything Google. Google Analytics, Google Search Console. If Google did it, you want it. <laughs> All the analytics you can get. This gives you so much information about your brand. It tells you exactly what people are doing. If they're coming to your website, if they're looking at your content, it tells you on Instagram, if you go look at your data right now, it'll tell you, hey, these are the top countries. These are the top states. These are the age groups. It gives you information to make strategic decisions. You know, sometimes we feel like it comes from our gut. That's okay. But verify your gut with the numbers, verify your gut with the analytics. So go to analytics, review all the analytics. If you don't have it set up, set up the analytics. The other thing you want to do when we're looking at assessing your business online is you want to look at what's that best performing channel? What's that best performing platform, right? Is it my search engine? Is it SEO that's doing it for me? Is it Facebook that's doing it for me? What is the top performing channel? Because that way you understand, hey, this is really working well. What are some of the things that I can take and move over to other channels and platforms? The other thing you want to know, know, number three is what are your worst performing channels? You know, many a times we spend time giving energy to these horribly performing channels and we can give that energy to better performing channels, or maybe we need to reassess what we're do doing in those spaces. The other thing you want to identify is what is your top performing content, okay? Because if you understand your top performing content, the best content that you're creating, that's getting the most engagement, that's getting the most shares, that's really getting people to interact with it, that's the content you want to repeat over and over and over again, right? Not the same content, but you want to do versions of that because you understand people love this. People are interacting with it. So you want to know your top performing content. The other thing you want to know is what is your best performing month, right? What is that month that happens where it's just like, you know what, this is really great for me. Is that Q4? Is that December? Is that November? Is that January, right? Is that maybe April or March? What is your best performing month? Because you can also look at that month to say, hey, I should set expectations that in this month, because this is my best performing month, I may be able to increase my revenue. I may be able to do some other things in that month to bridge the gap for other months. 
The other thing you want to do when you're looking at assessing your online presence is really look to the gaps and to the opportunities, right? And the analytics help you to fill in the gaps, you know? It really helps you to kind of go through and say, all right, so these things happened. Here's the path that people move forward, but they didn't take this step. I didn't get an email address. Is that a gap? Is that an opportunity for me to put a form where they can give me their email? What are the opportunities? What are the opportunities that are being presented to me? You know, I may have this product or service. And, you know, maybe it's, I can bundle it. I can package it in a different way. That's an opportunity to maybe share it with a new market, right? So you want to always be looking for those gaps. The analytics help you fill those gaps and the opportunities. It's really about understanding your industry, understanding your business, really feeling the pulse of the business, business, because when those opportunities present themselves, you can capitalize on it. And the last thing you want to do with, when you're assessing your online presence is pull together an optimization plan. Now, what does that mean? You will hear me talk about this. I talked about this last season. Optimization is key. Optimization is the thing that you actually do. Once you get everything up and running, you keep optimizing, you keep tweaking, you keep tweaking. So develop an optimization plan. What are these gaps I'm going to fill? What are the things I'm going to do to take things to the next level? So that's so important, that optimization plan, because if you have a great digital marketing strategy and you optimize later on, that's it. You just keep optimizing every year. You're like, this is my formula. How do I optimize it? How do I make it better? You don't have to do great. You don't have to make big changes and do amazing new creatives just optimize. You will see as we go through this process, it is really a series of optimizations that these businesses will uh, be doing. And that's going to move the needle so much more. Oh man, <laughs> that was a top seven. If I ever heard one, <laughs> I feel like I've been going through that top seven so much to, in these last three days. So I definitely, definitely, that's, that's my favorite top seven for now. <laughs> so I am so excited to bring Jamie to the stage because I know Jamie and I had such a great conversation. Actually, like two minutes before this, I was like, oh, I forgot to tell you X, Y, and Z. <laughs> so we were chatting before. So bringing Jamie to the stage. Jamie, how are you today? Introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Hi, Tamara. I'm Jamie with Eco Creates of America. Thanks so much for having me back this evening. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, oh, Jamie, how did you feel about the optimization strategy? And you can be, you know, you can tell them, tell the people. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like looking at a foreign language on the computer. <laughs> it was taking me to channels that I never knew existed within uh, Google. The Google console was completely new to me. Um, so we went through a process of setting me up this week. There's still some analytics that I've yet to see because I've got a few more tweaks to do to be fully set up. But I'm excited to see what's been working for me so that I can start to optimize even more on the winners and maybe take a break from the things that haven't been gaining the traction I thought they might. So. Right. You know, one of the things I loved as we were kind of going through, we jumped in and we started looking at, you know, things that we saw. I saw like 13 clicks on one day and I was just like, all right, where did this come from? And we started digging into that and we started having a conversation and you were like, oh, you know what? I had a, I had a guest blogger and that guest blogger drove this much traffic. And then we kind of got to a place of, okay, so this but guess what also drove, drove traffic and what did you get from it, right? So let's talk about that a little bit. And now what information, getting that information, how you can, how you will move forward with partnerships. Yeah, so that was, um, I was so excited to get the exposure from this individual's group that uh, I kind of failed on one of the key aspects, we'll call this a gap, and what was that number five or six you had there, um, that I didn't do a call to action, I didn't set something up for myself, I was just excited for the exposure, and I was like, oh, that'll be enough, they're going to see that I exist, but I didn't ask anybody to do anything, I didn't collect any emails, I didn't... Um, asked for a call to action to like, I didn't even put in my own inserts into that blog to ask them to look at other articles that I had written within my blog. So it was definitely a learning opportunity. I was really, you know, blessed and excited to have this visitor, but I can see where I can improve on it next time. 
Absolutely. And then we jumped in and we looked at some of your Instagram analytics. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit, because we started going through and looking at content in the last 30 days, right? Yes. What's getting shared, what's not getting shared and trying to give you an idea of, hey, understanding that best performing content, what's moving the needle. So looking at Instagram from that standpoint, because I know Instagram is one of those fascinating things for a lot of people. They're like, we love the likes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking at the, the numbers, right? What do so how did that make you feel, number one? And then what did you what did you walk away thinking? So um, I had a, I knew that I didn't get a lot of engagement on Instagram, but I was consistently putting out content. And I saw through those numbers, which were like 20 layers deep, by the way. I had no idea <laughs> how many different how go deep you can go into looking right. at all of that, all the buttons you took, the places you took me to. I didn't even know they existed. <laughs> I don't insight. Know. Jamie, don't say that. <laughs> so, well, you know what I mean. So, um, but getting in there, I could see that I, I, the numbers told me like the views and the shares, it's, it's just not on Instagram. My people are really on Facebook. That's where I get my interaction. That's where I get my traction. That's where I get my shares. We saw um, Linktree was very strong for me. And you had, you were very curious, like, well, we're not seeing the action on Instagram. What are they doing? How are they getting the link tree? Well, link tree is also on my private group in my Facebook and on my public page in my Facebook, uh, as well as my business page on Facebook. So I think Facebook just has a lot more interaction for me. I have a lot more natural presence of the sarcastic mama who, you know, can't do it all, but believes in the good intentions and does my best. And that really comes out in my personality for my personal page and in my business page. So I think that pulls a lot more interest. And that's where the link tree was getting the getting the hits. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, and this is great because I think last season we went through this with Chef as well too. She loved Instagram, right? But the traction is on Facebook. And I think that's good because now we're saying, you're really saying my top performing channel, my top performing social media channel is actually Facebook, right? Sometimes people just don't want to hear it because they're like, we like Instagram, but I think we're good with that. And I'm not saying we need to move away from Instagram, but we probably just need to look at now, what is the Instagram strategy and where are those people and how do we connect with those people on Instagram mm -hmm. so that the work that you're doing, that marketing activity, you really start seeing it being intentional and driving more of the right people through through Instagram. So I think there's some work to be done there. And then also one of the things you mentioned is, you know, there is that sarcastic, sassy mom who is, <laughs> who I love that, who is like, you know, <laughs> helping you at your home to be safe. How does that show up on Instagram? Because that might really work well on Instagram as well. So it sounds like they're two different your approach on Instagram and Facebook is a little bit different, right? Uh, so we might want to look to see how can we now take some of what works on Facebook, apply it with the Instagram formula wrapped around it, right? Yeah, I think that would be a really interesting strategy to follow. I, I don't know how to naturally be more outgoing on Instagram. So it's going to be a, a, you know, a learning process for me. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Instagram is one of those, I think, definitely daunting platforms, right? You're kind of like, should I take pictures? Should I do a lot of filters? What should I do? But I think Instagram is also that place where you can start interacting with, uh, experts in the industry, right? So you might want to just use that and be like, hey, you know what, maybe this is a space where I interact with some experts, start connecting with them, because those experts may have other people who are the, the audience of the eco friendly group may also be there. And you might be able to see them in the comments, because think about that, when you make a comment, somebody sees it, that might drive somebody to come to your profile. So I think there's some other opportunities that you can leverage Instagram for. Absolutely. So what are two of the big, or just give me one, let me not add too much pressure. What are one of the big changes that you think you're going to make <laughs> as we've gone through this process? Well, I am not going to stress so much about having content every single day for Instagram. I'm going to use, you know, the information, the language that I have evolved with these past few weeks, as well as um, the the graphics, and create some more uh, pimp, like build out my Pinterest a little bit more. Mm. So I still want to build. I'm just not going to put all that time and energy into Instagram. And then I'm also going to reach out and find out who can help me with learning to be more interactive with Reels because I know they're very popular and I've done a few, so they do get more views. However, I don't know how to just be me because reels don't feel so natural for me where I can easily repin something silly on Facebook and put my own spin on it. But 
Yeah. So it's just, it's a learning curve. It's, it's all just opportunity. Absolutely. And don't worry, we have an expert for you who will walk you through that process Great. as well. <laughs> I'm like, I think we have somebody for that. <laughs> we got somebody for everything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jumping into the content, the, the chat. Uh, hey, Amy, how are you? <laughs> optimize, optimize. <laughs> yes, 100%. We should be optimizing. But um, I'm so glad that this was a great session for you because I really, I, I enjoyed really kind of going through your process, kind of looking at everything. What I love about this is that it also led you back to, to pull together a hypothesis, mm -hmm. right? So when you got in and you talked a little bit about, you know, the blogger, what you could have done better, you started pulling together a hypothesis. You're like, wait a second, I see this number. We started digging into it and you were like, I, we did this. I did this on this date. Correlating those things mm -hmm. really starts to move you to that place of, every marketing activity is intentional. And I know I did this on this day, so I should see the impact of this here. Am I seeing that? Am I not seeing that? So I think going forward, you now have that blueprint to really look and say, when I do these things, this is my expectation. I should see this. And if I don't see a result, then what do I need to shift, right? Because those right. are the little things that you find yourself optimizing. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, completely. So, so fun. So in the last three weeks, we've kind of moved through this process from branding message, right, to mm -hmm. design elements, to target audience. And now we're in a space where we're talking, hey, pure optimization, pure assessing your online presence. And, and you have a, the work you've done to get the online presence is a good online presence. We're just looking at really how do we maneuver and really get you to that place of where people are willing really to walk in and buy? And I also love the picture that you've added to the front that lends to the family, right? So talk yeah. about that a little bit. That was really, when I saw that, I was just like, oh, yeah. it, feels, it feels like you showed a, keeping families safe, right? In that. Mm -hmm. So talk about that a little bit. So I was blessed with the opportunity. I have a photographer that does my box for me, uh, Brett Schmidt, and she also does like lifestyle photos for families. And I asked her to do a lifestyle photo shoot for Eco Crates of America. And then it kind of evolved into a combo of Eco Crates and family photo shoot. So I've actually got quite a bit of wonderful photos. I just haven't figured out how to display them properly on my website. But I've updated my um, personal uh, pages on social media. And then my website itself, I've got just a picture of the whole family on the front step. Everybody's got a product. I'm holding the box. And it was really fun to put together. Everybody really right. enjoyed it. Right. And I think it just really transcended the message of safe family, right? And here's my safe family. And I want to yeah. extend this over to your, your family. So your family could be safe. So, I mean, like once I saw it, I was just like this, it just, it just resonates. It makes sense. Uh, so I love the fact that you are making those changes. And I think that's where you'll start seeing and moving the needle because people are also going to be able to see their family within that. Right. Absolutely. That's, that's my hope. That's my goal. A hundred percent. Chef is here and she's like, I love the family photo. It was so good. It definitely was really good. And now I think the next step is really taking a look to see, you know, let's, we need to start looking at the blog information to understand the time on site. You know, how are people interacting with your blog and getting that content out there so they can interact with it. We can really start tracking it. So again, we really want you in a space where every activity you do, I, and I want you to think like this now, right? As you sit down to work for the business, every Every activity you should do, you should kind of be like, all right, how am I going to track this? How does this connect to the goal? What is this doing for me? And how do I, am I moving the needle with this or am I just having fun? <laughs> right. And then when it's done, also setting up that thing of, Hey, what are my expectations for this activity? Especially thinking it through all the way. What is my call to action? Really moving through a formula every time you do something, it gets you to that place of, again, number one, you'll start focusing in on activities that make sense for the business. And then eventually you get to a place where you're like, I'm, you, I'm doing revenue driving activities only. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting that place and having that roadmap. Yes, yes, yes. So next week we look at your sales funnel and then the week after it's the roadmap. I, when you do the roadmap, it's like this new blueprint that you will have. You will go back to it all the time. <laughs> it is such a great roadmap. So I'm excited. I was excited for the numbers I saw with you. You are, I think you're moving in the right direction. I love the changes that I'm seeing. I mean, we're definitely embracing. I'm enjoying them. They feel very natural. 
they do. I, we love that. It feels natural. And that's what we want to hear, right? Because it should feel natural for your business. And all of this should add up, right? I, I, I want when you meet with the expert that it all adds up, that it all makes sense. And that you're saying, hey, I'm making these changes because it makes sense for me, not just because these crazy experts out here are saying, do this. <laughs> All right. Well, Jamie, this was awesome. So yes. glad you were here. I cannot wait for next week. I know once you get with Michelle and you guys talk sales funnel, yes. that's going to be game changing. And then we get back together and we work on your digital marketing plan. I think those things are going to be groundbreaking for you. And then we start moving into some of the other experts. So we're getting those other experts finalized right now. Yes. <laughs> let's just say, let's just say your SEO guy is already in the building. Your, right. your interest person. So, you know, we have a few other people. People, they're trickling in. We're getting their dates, so everything's going to be lined up for that. So it's going to be it's going to be game changing. <laughs> yes, so much fun, Jamie. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Today. All right. All right. Yeah. Have a great night. Thank All you. All right. You as well. Bye. I see that. Oh man. And you know what? I always forget to put Jamie's URL up. So I'm just going to do it right now. Make sure that people can go check out Jamie's, um, check out eco crates. You know, I love what she is doing. I don't know if I get told you guys, but or actually I showed it on the show last two weeks ago. Jamie sent me some really cool stuff. Um, my mirrors are the cleanest they've ever been with these new products. Um, and I feel a lot safer, you know what I mean? So it's all in all, uh, really well. So check out eco crates of America, see what Jamie's doing, check out the changes she's making on her website, uh, how it connects back to the messaging that she and Jamila worked on some of the stuff she and Maria worked on. Uh, of course, her and Michelle, and now you'll start seeing some of the things we worked on next week as well. So super excited about that. So next, I'm going to talk a little bit about Uche. So uh, Uche is from ruralwatchafrica.org. And you know what? We are just so excited to be working with Uche. Last week, he had some technical difficulties. Um, he was without electricity. So he is based in Ni Nigeria. And so he was out without electricity for about four days. Um, but he kept he kept going. He kept going. So we're excited about that because his cause is a worthy, worthy cause. Uh, and we were able to connect with him. He was able to connect with Maria this week. So he's a one week behind, but that's fine because we still want to showcase the work that he's doing. We want to also highlight the fact that, you know, as we meet with these experts, you know, for this non-for-profit, each one of these experts are actually going an extra mile and giving him a little bit extra, right? That he's, they're giving him that Lanny app <laughs> that Michelle likes to talk about her business name, uh, but they're giving Uche a bit extra so that he can really continue to do the good work that he is doing and really helping and supporting the people of Nigeria. So he had an opportunity to meet with Maria this week uh, and talk through some of the design elements. And Maria is working on, you know, helping him pull together uh, the layout, the design elements, you know, making whatever fixes he needs to make uh, to the site. So let me uh, play uh, Uche's a snippet. Of course, what we try to do with Uche, because he is in Nigeria and it is probably like two o'clock in the morning over there now, what we try to do with him is get him pre-recorded so you guys can hear what he's thinking as he goes through this process with him, with us. We had a great call with him today. Uh, we tried to talk to him in the morning. And again, this is one of these things that we are so excited to be a part of because we know that again, he's making such a huge change in the world. So here's Uche. So my interaction with um, Maria uh, on graphic design and how to also uh, come up with um, graphic images that represent our work, our mandate, or using that or using graphic images to communicate to our audience um, in a very exciting form, in a very inspiring um, way that they could uh, connect or relate with what we are doing. And, and on, on a long run, I think that could also um, encourage partnership and um, collaboration. So she asked me about um, the meaning of our logo. So I told her that actually, I don't know, we've not, I have not actually given it a, a thought, trying to interpret that logo so she said, okay, oh, she's going to work together with me to see how we can come up with something actually to give that logo a meaning. And we came up with um, an idea of uh, the green aspect of the logo 
and I told her that that could mean abundance and all that. So um, she said, okay, I think she's going to like try to rebrand the logo, upgrade the logo. Oh, Maria is going to do over the logo and see, you know, Maria worked on this last week and, you know, she talked a lot about, you know, what is the meaning of it, right? Because she wants to help find the meaning so that that can be a deeper connection for the target audience. So I'm really excited to see what the logo turns out to be, what updates come for, from it. And I am meeting with Uche next week and we're going to go through and do the assessment. Uche also has a campaign starting in May and we are really working to help him with that. So pulling together an ambassador program so that we can quickly get people to be out they're spreading the message of Rural Watch uh, Africa uh, so that he can, you know, get to that place where they raise the revenue that they want to raise in the next three months. So again, really excited to be a part of this, excited that Uche is a part of this process with us. And he is, you know, he is getting it done regardless of time. So just again, this is such a great, such a great charity. And we are really excited to be a part of it. Amy, thank you so much for connecting us with Uche. Um, really, really glad that, 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 that he is here. Hey, Arlene, thanks for joining us. <laughs> so excited to see you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So next I am excited to bring to the stage, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, how are you doing today? How's it going? It's been a long week, but it's been, it's, been it, it's Thursday night, Friday Eve. <laughs> it's Friday Eve, right? We made it to Friday Eve. So, yeah. Michelle, we did the business this week. We did the assessment. <laughs> yes, we did. And that's why it's been a long week. <laughs> there, was so, there was so much that I didn't know. Right. Uh, that I, I, I just didn't. You don't know what you don't know. Right. right. And right. there was a lot of it that I didn't know. But, I, <laughs> but, but I'm just going to say that, you know, my theme, every week it's a theme, my theme for this week has been to be strategic. Like I'm learning how to be strategic in the actions that I'm taking and how I'm planning um, my marketing and everything that I'm doing. But also I, I realize I have to be strategic too about what the customer journey is supposed to be. Like when we talked about my website, right. what actions do I want them to take when they come to my website? Like I didn't have that mapped out. Right. So after meeting with you, I was able to really think about that and, um, you know, map out a process, an actual process of right. where I want them to go and what I want them to do when they come to my site. Right. I saw that. I saw some of that process. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> I had a chance to go through those emails today. I was just like, somebody's been working. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> you did say that. So talk about the process because we started off running through analytics. We kind of, I mean, we went through the same process we talked about with Jamie, right? We went through your Instagram. We went through your website. You know, some of the things I really loved on your website, the opportunity was that page with all the videos that was just kind of buried somewhere at the bottom of your website. It was like yeah. you were hiding it. And it was just all this great content that was out there already. And it's just like, man, how do we get people to binge on this? You know, I uh, actually, one of the presentations I did today and I talked about that, you know, how do you get people to binge on that content? And I think one of the things I told you is that don't create any more content. You don't need to create any more content. I, I need you to no more. <laughs> You're fine because you have so much content. It's just about getting people to see that content. Right. Yeah. So um, and, and to talk about the experience going through the analytics and looking at the numbers and how did that feel, where things are with your numbers and where we want to get things to. Yeah. So. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't know a lot of the things that we talked about. I didn't know how to access it. I had, you know, I, I definitely had the account set up, but I've never, uh, I never uh, dove in the way that I did with you. I was able to to look at it and see that I had over, let's see, how many uh, countries in terms of countries. I had 39 different countries clicking on my website, mm. going to my website, right? Who would have thought? Right. I, you know, one of the things that I've always been saying is I, you know, I want to be global. And here we are <laughs> with 39 countries at right. my You're side. Like, but You're like, I'm global. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I, 
think I'm global. <laughs> right. And so they're there and I just needed something for them to take action on. Right. And so that was the process of going through and thinking about what do I need them to do? How can I be more engaged with them once they come to my site? Um, and how can I kind of build that a relationship with them. And so those are the things that I was realizing and I was looking at, and I was also looking at, you know, where, where are they accessing my site from? And for me, I would say about 80% of the time they're accessing it from a desktop, which shows me because they're educators, they're sitting at their desks at school or at their desks at home doing work and, and they're looking for information. Right. And, and so going back to what you said about the content that I had, yeah, it's there, but it's 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 there's a lot of information that teachers can benefit from, but they just didn't know where to get it from. Right. And so with this new strategy now that I'm going to be adding to the website, it's going to take them directly to those resources for them to be able to get um, access to that. Right. One hundred percent. I love the fact that you were able to kind of connect the dots. Right. It's the uh, it's here's the the part of. Oh, it's most of the people are coming from desktop. Well, they're educators. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't expect to see more mobile. You expect to see more desktop and that's okay. Cause so many times we're always saying, Hey, mobile, 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 but some industries, government educators, all those, we find that there's actually more people coming from a desktop. So making sure that yes, your mobile site needs to absolutely, absolutely work well and you should be mobile ready, but you definitely need to pay attention to what's happening on that desktop. So the other thing we talked about a little bit was quizzes, right? So let's talk about that. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I, I did, you know, uh, do some searches online to look at different types of quizzes and tried to think about the ones that would be uh, best suited for my target audience. And so one of the things um, that I'm going to be implementing now on the website, and I've already developed the questions for the quizzes. So I have two different quizzes, one for administrators and one for teachers. And so when they answer those questions, it's, it's going to give me feedback about what their needs are and what their challenges are, which definitely will help me in preparing, you know, uh, training and content that meets their needs. It mm -hmm. also will help me with my messaging when I'm creating like my landing pages and my sales pages, because then I'm directly uh, calling out what their, you know, what their pain points are. And, and they're giving me that directly from the quiz. Right. So just by them visiting my site, I'm able to collect that data, but I'm also able to serve them because once they finish the quiz, here are some curated resources just for you, just for you as an administrator. Here's what you can your, your you know, your school can benefit from just for you as a teacher. I created this especially for you. Right. right? <laughs> That's how I was able to kind of, um, you know, look at how I want to structure the quiz to where it's strategic for me and it's also strategic for them for the right. customer. hundred percent. And I love the fact that you're kind of like, Hey, you're going to ask them questions and then you're going to create the answers to those questions to then get in front of them as well too, because that's the, that's how you're creating relevant content as well. Right. I, I did another presentation probably, uh, about 20 minutes before this, where I talked about that, creating that relevant content, but it's really understanding that target audience. Well, what are they asking? And so you have to start creating those answers for it, right? Our content shouldn't just be content to create content. It should be getting to the heart of what your target is asking. So you can say, hey, here's the answer to that question. So you're really getting into a space where you're doing that. Um, and so we also talked a little bit about you have other profiles um, outside of just. <laughs> so let's talk about that. You have yeah, some. It always, that, <laughs> I always get kind of caught up there because, you know, before I had my, you know, before I have this, th that I that got this business going, I was a consultant, but I was a consultant while being a teacher. And mm -hmm. so for many years, I have a professional teacher page, and that is the page that has my my following um that that has most of you know my my following i would say because i've developed that over many years and 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 so i have that side but then i also have the business side so i get confused as to you know do i post here do i post here do i where do i go <laughs> which one do i use right and you know, the business is new, so I don't have as many followers on those sites as I do my professional site. And so I've always had a hard time trying to, to bridge them together. But I realize now they're both me, right? They both <laughs> represent me. I represent the business. I'm the face of the business. So, I, you know, I can I can 
post on both of them the same content because ultimately it is coming from, you know, it's coming from my experience and my expertise. Exactly. And, you know, I love that point because where we are now is that you get to position yourself as a subject matter expert and that's your subject matter expert and that's what it is. So using that content is fine. Using those profiles are fine as well. You know, I think there's so many times that we get caught up in rules around this digital marketing. Right. And I'm just like, well, who's making the rules? <laughs> who, who decided? Right. So, you know, I think we should really look at opening up our online presence, not restricting ourselves and using the using what we have in order to move the business forward. So I'm glad that we were able to talk about that and just kind of move that away from your mind. Like, like I was like, why wouldn't you use it? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I couldn't even think of a reason why. I was just like, why wouldn't you use it? You're not using it? <laughs> use it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and for me, it's going to be more... Um, I, I, it, I would say it has... The, the professional side has that credibility because because I've, I've been active on them for so long and I've shared so much content on them. So, you know, if I, if I were to share things related to the business, I'm going to definitely have people uh, tune in and, you know, you know, accept it because it's coming from me about the business that I have and they already trust me, you know? Oh my, look at you. So they already trust you. You can move them in that direction. You can post about the business. If you have another website, you can add a page in there about the business because now that's a part of your digital ecosystem, right? So you really want to be in a space where you're like, I'm leveraging my entire digital ecosystem to run this business and move this business. It'd be different. It'd be very different if you were making marshmallows marshmallows <laughs> exactly. if you were like chef and you're like you're like i'm making marshmallows and i'm selling it on my IT. Right. but they're both exactly the same purpose exactly yeah and, and the audience the target audience is the same for right. you know for the both of them right so yeah i think connecting that so i'm glad we were able to kind of move that away and then you know getting to that space of content so we spent some time you looked at some of the content on instagram as well right because i always like to take people through the instagram gauntlet <laughs> oh yes i think <laughs> I like to look at those things on Instagram, looking at how many likes and how many, you know, um, comments and things like that through the Instagram. What I did notice, because uh, I went back and looked at Facebook versus Instagram, I got more um, engagement, I would say, on the Facebook than than Instagram. And, it, and I kind of tied that back to our conversation last week um, with Maria, where you know, she, she, she said to me, one of the things that I should work on is on Instagram posts differently than I do on Facebook because I'm very text heavy and that's okay for Facebook because that's, sure. what, that's, for, that's what Facebook, you know, that's what people do on Facebook, but on Instagram, it needs to be more visual. And right. so now, I understand now why I don't have folks looking at my Instagram post because <laughs> it's very text. <laughs> you're like, I just write a lot of words and you're like, it's a picture video platform. <laughs> <laughs> so I see the pieces kind of coming together and, um, you know, just, I, I'm, it's making sense now. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's making sense. So chef is saying 39 countries. That's amazing. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like, I'm already global. Arlene is saying that's a great concept, getting the call to action on the website. Uh, she's also saying that I'm glad to hear you say that it's okay to post some content in both places. 100%. Uh, you know, really think about if it's your target audience, you want to, you know, use those spaces. And then the other thing is on your personal profiles, people may want to support you. Uh, Jamila it talks about that all the time, right? She uses her personal profile and gets a lot of engagement there and then pushes some of that over to her business. So really thinking about your ecosystem and using your ecosystem in a smart way and not don't put these hard, fast rules on yourselves, right? And I think that's what we do sometimes. We're like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I always take a step back and I'm like, okay, who said so? <laughs> or like, well, where's the where's the digital guidebook that somebody said so? And then really challenge it, right? What makes sense? It's the same target. It's the same people. And you are a subject matter expert. And one of the things that most um, small businesses are trying to do, we're trying to build these um 
these these expertise. We want to be subject matter experts, right? Because that is where it is. Uh, and so you're already a subject matter expert. So now that is something you will leverage for the business. Leverage. You have to look to you first. What are all the things I can leverage to grow this business? And if those folks yeah. are there, yeah, you will get that excitement and that traction and draw them back. So uh, I'm really glad that we were able to connect, work on that and get things moving. So what, what changes have you, um, what changes have you made so far? <laughs> um, so definitely, you know, making, I, I have my list of things that I'm going to be adjusting on the website. Mm -hmm. So the client journey is more clear. And so that I'm getting that information that I need and they're getting the information that they need. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, uh, you know, developing a better social media strategy and being <laughs> You're like, I'm just not going to put a lot of words on Instagram. <laughs> I need more pictures. <laughs> more visuals. More pictures on IG. <laughs> and, and more, you know, more videos. Being able to go through all that content that I have, like you said, repurposing it. I have so much, so much content. I can go through those or have someone help me go through those and get little 10 second clips you know, and, and be able to repurpose those for reels and, and things on, on, on social. Uh, and I don't have to re reinvent the wheel because I, it's already there. You do know? not need to reinvent the wheel. And Chef is saying, IG data is an eye opener. Everyone has to look at it once because I'm telling you, everyone always finds out that Facebook is the better performer. That's always the thing. It's like, they're like, oh, wow, Facebook is better. And I'm like, yeah, you know, no one, no one likes to admit it. Uh, <laughs> Arlene's saying, so true. We got some praying hands. <laughs> uh, be, the, be the shmi, be the subject matter expert and always go to the data. Um, yes. I can't trust the data data, right? Sign up for all the analytics, get the data, become one with the data, understand the numbers that you're looking at as well too, right? Some yeah. of the things we were able to do was really get you to a place of having some clear KPIs. What are those metrics that we're going to look at going forward as well too? In the assessment, I think I thought that was important so that we now have some baseline numbers, right? We really want to get to that space of what are these baseline numbers? So you know, when I see X amount of traffic coming in, that means I should expect X amount of conversions, X amount of calls, X amount of bookings, and X amount of revenue, right? Because that's yeah. what digital has to get you to. Uh, and so every activity, and I say this all the time, but every activity should be super intentional, trackable, and lead back to the goal that you're trying to achieve. So that's really what we're trying to give you the framework for um, here as we go through this process. Yeah. And it, it makes me think too about, cause when I was looking at like the trends and, and the peaks, right there, there were certain dates where I may have been a panel speaker or I may have been, you know, speaking somewhere. And that's when people were visiting my, my site the most. So I have to be more strategic there when I do go to those um, events and, and, you know, I am featured to where I am bringing the, bringing the, 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 the target audience, onto my website, but to get something and to, to build that relationship, Absolutely. you know, at right now they just go and they go. I don't even know that they visited. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, but when, with all these changes now that I'm going to implement, I'm going to know who exactly who they are, what their pain points are, what their needs are, and then I'll be able to nurture them as well and, and kind of keep that relationship. I hear some digital marketing talk in the closet. What? I'm like, is this week 12? <laughs> because <laughs> it's the last show. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm learning. <laughs> are absolutely listening and learning. And I love that, right? That's exactly how it should be. So when you go to these events, because your call to action can be complete my quiz, your call to action can be follow me on social media, your call to action can be stay connected with the brand, right? Leveraging those things to get more people coming into you. Because if they're already going to your website, then now we just want to push them to a place that makes sense so you can capture that data, right? Uh, and an event is a great place to get get those email addresses, right? So you yeah. really want to, that call to action is going to be really game changing for you. And I think as we start going through the content and now understanding the data that you're looking at, you will really get to that place where you're able to, again, pull together a hypothesis. When you see something, you're like, this happened on this day. This is what it was. This is what it is. And then, and then prove it out. The numbers yeah. allow you to prove it out. And then when something good happens, you get to look at the numbers and you get to do it again. Do it again. Exactly. Right. It's like this. Yeah. 
uh, you know, I'm learning that this process is just like being a teacher, right? You you have to look at the data and use the data to drive your instruction. So I have to look at this data and use that data to drive my strategy for sales. <laughs> <laughs> everything you're saying here is just what okay chef is giving us the marketing in motion okay i have to go get the marketing in motion banner and pop it up myself because that is so true this is exactly what we call marketing in motion and we love to see that uh, i love every time i talk to you guys it seems like every week everyone gets a little bit sharper a little bit better and by the end of this you're going to be like you know what my digital strategy is <laughs> and I do. Uh, I'm excited to see the quiz get come to fruition. I sent you some stuff today. You know, we have a quiz. I showed you what that looked like. Jamila has one, so you can kind of see what it looks like on her website, uh, drawing people to kind of see it and be the first thing that they engage with and getting that information and you know, really getting yourself to a place where if you can get everyone to take that quiz, it means that you have information for everyone coming into your website, right? And yes. you can say, hey, either email, I have this information, I know this, I know that, and it really changes the game for you. And as you get more information, you make updates to the quiz, you make changes to it, and you continue to move things forward. So yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about the quiz because of just the content that it'll give me for, you know, just to meet their needs. Like it's gonna give me, if I have 39 countries, on the website now, that's right. still my perspectives of the people from different, you know, places working with different kinds of kids. And I, that's information that is going to truly benefit the work that I do and what I'm able to create for them for solutions. Absolutely. And I mean, we didn't even talk, you know, those 39 countries, right? If we just started to look to see the clicks that came from the highest country and start digging into those one at a time, right? Because you might say, hey, this one country gave me 10 clicks and those 10 mm -hmm. clicks could be game changing because you can go start understanding what's happening in that country around education, how their teachers are feeling. And yeah. you might say, hey, here's a new market that I can tap into. Understanding also what are are there resources to spend money in those places? So you could start doing market research and look mm -hmm. at that as a new opportunity, right? Those 39 countries, all I hear is opportunity. Okay, <laughs> and, and Jamaica and Trinidad were, were, were in the mix. <laughs> let's go so you kind of look back to see well what are the where are they giving money where are they giving money for teachers for professional development who's doing that and if these countries are in the mix what are their needs and starting to tap into those people i think yeah that's the opportunity there it's like pulling those 39 countries to see which one is the top clicker who's coming the most the time they're spending on site because google analytics gives you all of that data right it tells you how long you can dig all the way in you know we just went to the first page but you can dig in a lot more Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's very helpful. So that's a bonus. <laughs> 39 countries means 39 opportunities. <laughs> yes. 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 I'm all about that. <laughs> well, Michelle, this was great. And again, I just love the direction that you're moving in. I love the conversation we're having every week. You guys really just get to that place of being better, stronger marketers. And I mean, I, I, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. I'm going to put your website up again. Definitely check out, check out her website, see the progress she's making. The quiz is going to be there soon. <laughs> yeah. But just check out the process. Um, Michelle, this was awesome. Please, I cannot wait for next week in your sales funnel. <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like brick by brick. Did we add another brick this week? <laughs> yes, we certainly did. Yes. Data uh -huh. is key. Data is key. Good, good. And we, the sales, yes. We need to get the search console pieces finished up. And once we get that up and running, I sent you over some information about that. So let's just get that up and running and you'll start to see that's going to give you a wealth of information on already what you're ranking for. By the time you get to the SEO person and he sees that stuff, it's going to be game changing. So oh, wow. we're setting okay. you up for some of the other um, speakers or experts that are supposed to come as well too. Uh, so, because all these things are, for us to have a holistic strategy, everything connects, right? So what Michelle is doing, what Jamila is doing, what I'm doing, what the SEO person is doing, social media, it all connects uh, because it's really one content strategy that we push out across all these channels and platforms. Yeah. No, I definitely see the connection from the messaging to the money. Yeah, the message to the money. media, <laughs> MMM, <laughs> the alliteration, the message to the money to the media. I'm just saying, Chef, that's a t shirt. <laughs> Chef loves to call out t shirts. That's a t shirt right there. 
we got to capture this. <laughs> well, Michelle, yeah. it was awesome speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining. We will so definitely much. catch up next week. Have a All great right. one. Take you care. Too. Bye. Bye. You hear these businesses out here in these digital streets sounding like digital marketers? Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. All right. So, you know, I'm excited to bring Kim Neek to the stage. What's going on, Kim Neek? How are you doing today? Raise a vibration. <laughs> we can't hear you. Are you muted? You're muted. Unmute. Okay. <laughs> Better. Peace I'm and like, love, peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs> How are you? How's everything? I'm doing well. I feel good. How about you? I am doing well. I'm excited. You know, I get excited on a Thursday when I hear people talking digital marketing. We get the numbers running. Everybody's sounding so good. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk. We had a long session. We went we went a little bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was just so much. It was just like we boom, 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 just yeah. hitting all kinds of areas. It was, I was, it was yeah, like, I, I definitely, by the time you caught up to me, I was like, I, I worked with two businesses already and I was just like, <laughs> you form. You was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So talk to me a little bit about just kind of the process because you're in a different stage, right? You are in a stage where we needed to really pull, start, start pulling numbers together, where do you want to go? So it was less about looking at your analytics at this point and more so getting a feel for where do we want to go in the next two months and starting to build that, um, you know, here's the, here's your threshold of numbers, right? So what did that feel like for you? Cause we're now in a space where we've talked about, we want to see you because the business is new. We want to really see you in the next, by June, we want to get to a place where we have a campaign up and running and we're looking at June being a $1,500 month, right? That's our plan. We, mm -hmm. we kind of broke it down into how many, what do we want to sell? We went, we looked at the lowest possible cost item on your website and what that would look like to get to $1,500. So talk about that process. Cause I know at first it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely it was like, first of all, it was like being in a uh, math class. <laughs> um, just like really trying to, <laughs> I mean, you know, cause you really have to give it, a, you have to really be intentional about what it is you want to do. Because it's one thing to feel like you want to make money, but it's like, what's your goal? What is, what is my goal? What is it that I want to see happen? So actually working through that and really seeing what it looks like was very, like, very pivotal and very um, helpful because I feel like it's also part of like being able to envision and make things happen and kind of like have a plan of where you, where I'm working towards what I'm working right. towards. Right. And, um, one of the things that you said that I should do, which I feel like was really a great idea, was to get, first of all, I need to first put my business out for my social media amongst my friends, amongst my families, and track, kind of look at what they are most interested in first. So I could kind of see what is the most popular things, what are people gravitating towards, so that I could know what would be more popular kind of like testing out testing out the water kind of seeing where is on my hot going where i'm hot and where i'm cold at you know <laughs> exactly right. and that was really good because i'm like you know that makes a lot of sense and i decided that you know i'm definitely i have to do that but i also want to say that another thing that was just so good about it about it with you first of all, i just want to say you're like uh you was just like all the no the nuts and the bolts and like just kind of like the doctor just come in and just like okay <laughs> this is what you just so you see every angle i you are really truly you you're an expert <laughs> so <laughs> so it's just so much like um <laughs> So, um, hey, what I, mean, you I know, like, it's just like, wow, you're very passionate and, um, a solution based person. So like just everything that you were able to look at it and see, okay, even with optimizing your webs, my website, something that I don't feel like a lot of us think about is, you know, making sure that your images are able to load fast enough, like, you know, how was your load time when your website, because this is going to keep the attention of your customer. If your load time is too slow, you might just lose your customer that your potential customer. Right. And um, just going back to being able to look at 
who comes to my website, friends, family, or even new people that don't know my website or anything, when they do come, looking at their journey, like when they come to the website, what pages are they visiting? You know what I mean? And how can I take that customer and have them actually convert, not just looking at it, but actually convert to get to the shopping cart. And if they do get to the shopping cart and they don't actually buy anything, why is it like, so it's kind of like being detective, you know, it's like really looking. Um, I feel like Google analytics is like a cheat sheet, you know, like you get it, you know, like you go behind and you see Thank everything. You. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, Here are the answers to the quiz. Yes. Yes. And no yes. It. <laughs> so I no love one. that. I really love that. Like, I think Google analytics is going to be my best friend. I feel that uh, Google con the cons was it um, search console the search console search. yes that's also going to be my best friend. Um, I didn't have my site index so that was another flaw because I did have a lot of content because I have my company or my website is also informational based. Like when you buy products, you, a lot of people may not really know how to use it even though they're interested or they may not know what the history behind it is. Right. So educating them was important. So I did have an idea of like using keywords, um, but I added those in, but it wasn't getting indexed. <laughs> So, so funny, this, like, I was just like, oh, let's see what page of Google you're on. You know, I'm ready to go to page 10. I'm fine with it. And I'm like, and then I look at your website and what's crazy about it is from an optimization standpoint, your SEO is on par, right? Uh, so, so on point, you have the, in your, in the, 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 you are the slug, you have like the keywords on the page, you have rich, valuable content. And as we were kind of going through Google, I was just like, okay, you're not on page two, you're not on page three, you're not on page four. I was like, is your website index? <laughs> because we also got to take a look at the content that's there is a bit older, older content from other folks, right? So once we got your website indexed, I know in the next like two or three weeks, we're going to start seeing you ranking in places that are so, you know, that's relevant. So I think that's just going to be game changing for the business. Yes. And even um, with that, you know, the ideas of like, how I could use videos to attract people, you know, right. just looking at some of the videos that was out there, how they were so old and no one's put anything new out. Like I could, it's just so much areas. It's, it's like sniffing out where you can make, where you can make money, where you can interact with people. How can you engage and get people to your Thank website? You. you know, even what using answer uh, the public, that well. was interesting because it's like, okay, so what, what are people asking? You know what I mean? And so, the, uh, even with the quiz, you, the quiz idea that you, you know, suggested, I was like, wow, like I can really engage people with this and really have like, and it gives me feedback because now I can know what other content to put out there. Like, it's just, I don't feel like I can put into, it's not enough time to express. <laughs> <laughs> how like not enough time to express how good this was. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. Like meat and potatoes. Good. Like it was so good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Um, good. <laughs> yes, and uh, also even with like the suggestion to go to look at my competition and sign up, you know, look at what they're doing, you know, look at what their marketing skills is like. How many times did they right. email you? How many, what are they putting in their emails? And, right. you know, what kind of sales are they offering? What are their hot items? You know, right. all of that is going to help me like be, uh, you know, look at it, not copy them, but just have my own version of it because we all have our own way of expressing it. It's kind of like art to me. Like everyone is a separate entity and artist of their own. So you could, you know, but it's still the same information. It's just how you put it out there. And it's going to be people that's going to love the way I put it out versus others is going to like other websites, but it's always the customer I'm targeting is going to like what I, what I have put out, you know, exactly. but I just have to put it out. <laughs> exactly. Let's jump into the comments. So, First, of all, like, this is Chef in the T-shirt mess messaging me your money. <laughs> drop. There are always T-shirt drops on this show. <laughs> the digital doctor in the building. <laughs> I think I found my three-worder, the digital doctor in the building. <laughs> I'm like, okay. It's like my 15th name now. Um, great point. Analytics equals answers, right? That is, I think, Kim, that 
that is really a great point, right? It's like the cheat sheet. And I'm going to steal that and start saying it. I'm like, the analytics is the cheat sheet. <laughs> we'll get the answers. Uh, and yes, you know what? Uh, Diddy Boy, uh, Diddy Boy Book is saying that, yes, it's all a learning curve. It absolutely is a learning curve in this digital space, right? We sp we're, You're spending time looking at it and really assessing. And that's what I love, right? I think what you walked away from gave you so much to kind of go back and look at and now really step into hey, how am I strategic? How am I, how am I marketing my business online? And what are the people seeing? We were, I think we spent a lot of time looking at the customer side of things too, right? Because the business is so new, we got to go through the mobile side of your website, take a look at the yeah. mobile side of the website, see some of the flaws there, the things that you could fix to give that better experience. So by the time you're up and running, you know that, hey, they're going to have the optimal experience. Yes. So I love that. And then we talked a lot about and this is where we have to get you because Chef and Trudy Ann are our mentors this season. So we have to get you connected with the mentors mm -hmm. because the yes. other thing we talk about is how can we create a little bit of a spiritual kind of subscription box yes. situation? <laughs> so how to get you talking to the mentors because they are subscription box experts out here in these digital streets. I can't and I think wait. <laughs> I'll coordinate a meeting, but I think it'll be something great for you to talk to them about. And I'm sure they'll have a wealth of information because these ladies are the best at what they do. Uh, but there's so much opportunity for what you're doing. Uh, one of the other great ideas that I have to put out here that you talked about was the, this one was a good one. This one was the, it was the breakup box, was it? Yes. <laughs> what we call it? it was just like energy cleanse, you know, uh, cleanse. yeah, breakup. Should you break up, you need a cleanse. And what does that look like? Yes. How, do you, how do you get him or her out of your life? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I just thought like, so there were some really creative ideas that came out of it, but us getting an opportunity to look at the analytics, look through what we want to see, and then set those numbers up for us to start to see if, okay, cool, here's that goal of 1500. If we get to that 1500, or more, we understand these things really worked or these are things we need to tweak. So having that new goal to start off driving business. And, you know, I think one of the things you talked about was you had the sales that you've had so far. Someone came to your website and was been talking to you about something and just kind of went and just bought something. And yes. it was like, okay, <laughs> well, that's a good sign, right? It means <laughs> The target audience is definitely intrigued. The, the the products that you have are amazing. And so I think that you do have the audience out there. So I'm really excited about where we go next. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you had a good time this week. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. No, it was really great. I'm so glad that you guys are taking the information in. You guys are doing an amazing job. I mean, it was it was just really, really good. Uh, subscription box, you are a great category for that. So definitely we will mm -hmm. be connecting you with them. Um, Rashida saying dope, <laughs> dope. <laughs> right? We're working it out. <laughs> We're working it out. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It is always a pleasure to have you here. I love the excitement and I love the changes and things that you're making. And Oh, you guys are making us look good. <laughs> Sounding like digital marketers over here. Peace and blessings, Kim. Peace and blessings. Thank you. <laughs> For sure. Definitely. Give thanks. Take care. You too. All right. Oh, man, guys, you see what is happening in these digital streets with these businesses? Oh, all right. So I'm going to do my recap. I'm going to drop my top seven again. So here is the recap. Okay, so these are the seven tips. So number one, review the analytics from your channels and platform. Wherever you have analytics, whether it's Google Analytics, whether you're on Instagram, whether you're on Facebook, you want to look at the numbers. These analytics tell you what people are doing. It tells you if your content is working. It gives you a lot of information. Kim Neek just said it. It is the cheat sheet, okay? It is the cheat sheet. It gives you the answers. The other thing you want to do is you want to really start figuring out what's your best performing channel. Many a times we're looking at a channel that's not our best performing channel, but we put a lot of energy and effort into it. Sometimes we love those channels and that's not your best performing channel. Many a times, everyone here today 
talked about the fact that Facebook was actually better channel performing channel for them than Instagram, but there's still a lot of energy going Instagram. I'm not saying stop using it, but I'm just saying understand which channel is the best performing channel. The other thing you want to know is which is the worst performing channel for you. So you know that you don't need to spend that much time or maybe you need to adapt or change your strategy that you're using in that platform and channel. The other thing you want to know is what is your best performing content, right? Content is king. It's so important that you understand the content that's resonating with your audience. If you understand the content that's resonating with your audience, here's what you get to do it over and over again. You get to take that content formula and create that content that will resonate with them consistently. The other thing you want to do is identify your best performing month. What is that month in the year where you make the most revenue? What is that month in the year where you get the most traffic? Things go really well for you. You want to understand that month because maybe you can shift some of the goal. If you don't make a goal in a specific month, maybe you can shift it to that month. Is it the holiday season? Is it the months of the holiday season? Is it the middle of the year? Is it summertime? What is your top performing month? The other thing you want to do is start to identify the gaps and opportunities. When you look at the analytics, as you look at the analytics, stepping through the analytics, you get to see, hey, you know what? This didn't happen. I put this piece of content up. No one shared it. No one liked this content. Maybe they didn't like the content. Maybe they didn't see the content. Maybe I need to get more the content out to more people, right? Or maybe I need to change my content formula. Where are your opportunities? Today we talked with Kim about an opportunity to maybe create a subscription box, right? There's an opportunity there for her. So we talked with Michelle about 39 countries. You know, she talked about 39 countries. All I heard was opportunities there. And the last point is to develop an optimization plan. Many a times when we're thinking about digital marketing, we want to think about creating new campaigns, something new. Many a times what we need to do is really just optimize what we already have, right? Go back and look at the things that are working and make minor tweaks and changes. Uh, that's where we need to be. The heart of digital marketing is really having a clear optimization plan. Once you get the right formula for your business, you're just in a space where you're optimizing, 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 right? You will hear me say that a lot as we go through this process. So that, my friends, that's our top seven. I had such a great time this week working with these businesses. Can I tell you, it was, we're getting to a place now where week number four, and they already sound like digital marketers. They're already moving the business, moving the needle with their businesses, right? They're making the changes. They're doing the work. This can only get better from here, right? So I feel like, you know, we're on the way up. <laughs> so next week, the businesses get to meet with Michelle Gordon and they get to work on their sales funnel, really pull that together, that funnel and that customer journey, refining that customer journey. The customer journey is something that as a business, we're responsible for creating a really seamless, cus seamless customer journey, <coughs> excuse me, that gets people to that place of converting in the long run. So... I am so excited about next week. I'm excited about every week on this show. Can you tell I say that so much, but I can't help myself. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This was awesome, awesome. Definitely share, subscribe. If you are on YouTube, I want you to go subscribe. If you are not on YouTube, you know what? Go to YouTube, subscribe to YouTube anyway. But if you're watching us on Facebook, tell your friends about the show this is where we focus on bringing in subject matter experts to help these businesses move the needle. We have a plethora of experts. This week, I was the expert helping them do a digital marketing assessment so that they can really get to that place of achieving their business goals. I am Tamara Monlouis, founder of Monoban Digital Marketing Solutions. Super excited to be here with you every Thursday night for the next, I believe, nine weeks we may have left. So keep watching us. Keep watching these businesses move. Keep watching our experts. We'll be back here next to next, not next Tuesday, next Thursday. We'll be back. Have an amazing night, guys. Take care. Bye. Last comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Great job. <laughs> Have a great night. Bye.